I was stunned to hear that seven members of Parliament in the British House of Commons had defected from the British Labour Party, partly on the grounds of Brexit, but partly, and even more fundamentally, on the grounds of institutional anti-Semitism. Now, I'm a democratic socialist and I find it very, very hard to believe that the British Labour Party is guilty of anti-Semitism. I, uh, I find it challenges credulity. But on the other hand, there must have been a kernel of evidence or of concern which drove the exodus of these seven members. It doesn't entirely surprise me because the nemesis, the scourge, the never-ending rising tide of anti-Semitism is being documented yet again around the world. Interestingly enough, just a couple of months ago, CNN, of all outlets, did a major survey of anti-Semitism related uh, in many areas in Europe. There were seven countries surveyed, the United Kingdom, France, Germany, Austria, Sweden, Poland, and Hungary, and 7,000 people interviewed. And they found that a sizable minority had never heard of the Holocaust or knew very little about it at best. These were people over the age of 18. But they found even more distressingly that between a fifth and a third of all those who were surveyed felt that Jews had too great an influence in politics, in banking, in the economy, in finance, in the media, and in civil conflict and wars. Thus do the slurs never seem to end. Now, there are similar findings in surveys that have held in the United States, and who can forget, the, the possibly forget, the slaughter of Jews in the synagogue in Pittsburgh just a few months ago. You know, when I was at the United Nations in the 1980s, it was a positive cesspool of anti-Semitic mutterings, fury and rage against uh, Israel, which translated often into anti-Semitic outbursts. I, I can recall going to dinners at various ambassadors' homes and, and uh, engaging in discussion and you'd be talking about politics in Central America and suddenly you find yourself discussing Jewish landlords in Brooklyn. Or you'd be discussing African economic recovery and suddenly find yourself discussing the Jewish control of the media and the banks in New York City. It never ended. Now I must say, as a Jew myself in Canada, I've never felt compromised by being Jewish, but you never forget some of the incidents that occur in life. You know, back in the 1970s, uh, my wife and I had to move our children out of the local elementary school because we could persuade neither the principal nor the teacher that it was not useful to have anti-Semitic symbols in the classroom. There was a swastika at the top of the Christmas tree as a cultural symbol for the class and there was sufficient evidence of anti-Semitism in our little enclave where we lived that we actually physically moved as a family. And how can I possibly forget the moment when I was with my friends and organizers in my own riding constituency at a fundraising dance and in a break in the music in the dance uh, from a platform at one end of the dance hall, a voice rang out, Hey, Jew boy! Get yourself up here to make a speech. Plus a change. What was true more than 40 years ago, there is evidence of again today. But fortunately, there are ever-increasing numbers of voices raised against racism, xenophobia, misogyny, and anti-Semitism. And the fight for human rights must never end. That was last week. I'm Stephen Lewis.